Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today on the channel we have Dr. James DiNicola Antonio. By the way, Dr. James, why don't you unblock me? No idea why I'm blocked. I'm blocked on both accounts, my personal and my main. And I didn't even comment or follow you on my personal. It's interesting, to say the least. It was after I said that grounding cannot be achieved by standing on the sand, because sand is an insulator, and uh, blocked. So, anyway, I don't know if he's incorrect here or not. I just saved it just to see what he has to say about this. His video is entitled, How Omega-6 Seed Oils Cause Disease. They do cause disease, let's just put it that way. At least that's my opinion, of course. There's no scientific evidence that they cause cause disease, but anyway. Let's just watch this real quick. Three minutes and 25 seconds. Why not? So I'm going to discuss how omega-6 seed oils actually cause chronic disease. This includes things like Alzheimer's, fatty liver disease, heart disease, eye disease, kidney damage. By looking at this, I do not exactly see the most salient reason. There's one, oxidation products, of course, but anyway, we'll, we'll get into it. A basically mechanistic perspective. So what you have here at the top is omega-6 seed oils. So this includes things like canola, soybean, corn, safflower, cotton seed oil, sunflower seed oil. Because they're very high in polyunsaturated fatty acids, they are very susceptible to oxidation. Yes, yes they are, correct. These oils are attacked by air when we- ex Well, not attacked, they react with air, oxygen. Them with heat and hexane, they oxidize. When we cook with them, they oxidize. And actually in stomach acid, these omega-6 seed oils further oxidize. So essentially you're ingesting- Correct. Oxidized and unoxidized omega-6 fats. And essentially these turn into things like lipid hydroperoxides, uh, aldehydes as well. Aldehydes, there it is. Aldehydes even in vastly small concentrations. Destroy lipid rafts, tear cell membranes to pieces, bind to DNA to promote carcinogenesis by causing mutations to it, and in a high enough concentration, but still relatively low, kill cells outright. For HNE, that's one that's found primarily in, I think, commercial french fries. Last time I looked, that was a long time ago, but. And we absorb these substances in the intestine and they get absorbed into and damage our cell membranes. So this Yeah, so basically when you absorb fats, they get absorbed into chylomicrons. The liver releases these chylomicrons along with LDL or lipoproteins that carry cholesterol and all that stuff throughout the body. And so these oxidation products that are carried within these LDL particles as well as the chylomicrons get administered to every single cell of the body. And one of the final destinations of these oxidation products or lipid peroxidation products, like he was just saying, is the liver itself. So this is why it's highly associated with fatty liver disease. So basically lipid bilayer that can be oxidized when you overconsume these omega-6 fats. So essentially this leads to cellular dysfunction and death, and this can happen in the brain, the liver, this can happen in all organs and lead to disease through this pathway. But there's another interesting pathway as well, is that these are, are lipoproteins. So this is considered... Oh, he may talk about it right now. Bad cholesterol. It's considered that. There's no such thing as bad cholesterol. LDL is a healer of the body. It's the lipoprotein that carries cholesterol to other parts of the body. Also, it's not cholesterol in the first place. It's a lipoprotein that carries cholesterol. There is one molecule that is called cholesterol, and that is it. There's VLDL, LDL, SDLDL, HDL, IDL, chylomicrons. None of them are damaging to the body because the body f creates them on their own. Any excess cholesterol that one consumes is simply recycled and or excreted by the body, as is indicated at that given instance in time lipoprotein or LDL, but all lipoproteins can absorb these oxidized and unoxidized omega-6 fats. There you go. That's what I was saying. But since LDL is primarily the administrator of cholesterol throughout the body, that's why I mentioned that one. It's more salient. And the more omega-6 fats in your actual lipoproteins will oxidize all lipoproteins. We also have an oxidation of what are called chylomicron remnants as well. And this can lead to heart disease through numerous mechanisms. Now, the omega-6 can even saturate our white blood cells, leading to further reactive oxygen species and more damage to our lipoproteins. I tend to believe that. I actually, that detail I don't even know is true, but mechanistically, yeah, one could infer. And then what happens, this is a blown up view of LDL. And essentially, there's this ApoB or apolipoprotein B. On yes, ApoB receptors are on LDL. ApoA is on HDL. Now, typically, if it's not oxidized, it'll be picked up by the LDL receptors in the liver. The ApoB100 receptor, yeah. However, 
when this ApoB gets attacked by lipid hydroperoxides, by aldehydes that covalently bind. Did you know glucose is an aldehyde? It's an aldohexose. I think, James, you should clarify a little more as to what you're talking about here because you're getting your point across, and this may be the pedant in me, the captious element of me, but the problem here is at the time that lipoproteins are invaginated into the arterial walls or the injured areas of the arterial walls, they are typically not at that time oxidized. They become oxidized later on by things like aldehydes and like glucose, because glucose is an aldehyde, which then makes the body launch an immune response because it is now recognized as a foreign protein. The reason I think that you should establish that is because when you say things like aldehydes will oxidize your lipoproteins, it sounds as if you're saying it does that before it's actually administered into injured areas of the arterial wall, which is typically not the case. But anyway, as you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness, disorder, and disease one may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product in doing such a thing, is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule called Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any hard health outcomes. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many other products from the Cerule company, please refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. It's no longer recognized by the LDL receptor in the liver, so it's not taken up again by the liver. Correct. But it's now recognized by our macrophages, our immune... Macrophage. Macro means big, phage means eat. Phago, or like a phagocyte. There are particular white blood cells that will come in and actually eat pathogenic bacteria. It works in tandem with fibrin, which is a sticky net-like matrix that is consequent to fibrinogen exudation from cells in an inflammatory event. So, yeah, these macrophages will come up and they will eat them, and they will form foam cells, which can contribute to atherosclerotic plaque. But we'll get to that in a minute because there's a detail that's important in that situation. Very important detail. By the scavenger receptors. And what, what basically happens is these macrophages then take up the oxidized LDL, and this forms foam cells and atherosclerosis or plaque in the arteries. Okay, not really. Sorry, James. Foam cells constitute one plus or minus one percent of atherosclerotic plaque. So even when people say that this will contribute to atherosclerotic plaque, it's not even 3% of what atherosclerotic plaque is constituted of. Atherosclerotic plaque is largely composed of scar tissue, which can become calcified at later stages, then causing thrombi, which are blood clots. Scar tissue is largely composed of collagen. This has to do with fibrous tissue. Fibrin. Fibrin is a consequence of inflammation. Inflammation can be caused by high blood pressure, which is typically subsequent to an upregulated Randall cycle, but also to other things as well. So you got a lot of this correct. You mainly focused on oxidation products the two different ways the oxidation products can negatively impact the body. You got that correct. However, you didn't even touch on the deuterium concentration, and you also didn't touch on the interactions of the cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase enzymes from arachidonic acid, which is a byproduct of linoleic acid through the conversion process that it goes through, which is the primary fat found in omega-6 seed oils. So those are very salient factors. And this can form in the carotid arteries or the coronary arteries, and this can lead to cardiovascular disease, like strokes and heart attacks. Yes, correct. So essentially, it's consuming these polyunsaturated omega-6 fats that lead to these very harmful lipid oxidized products that can lead to oxidation of all of our lipoproteins, causing cardiovascular disease, and actually oxidation of all cell membranes leading to chronic disease. Yeah, if you want to know more about how they actually induce harm, check out my other videos as well, please, because I talk about it quite often, particularly with respect to cyclooxygenase and lipoxygenase enzymes and all that, but not the worst video I've ever seen. I think even within the carnivorous space, we tend to believe that a lot of this foam cells and all that stuff are contributory, let's say, to atherosclerotic plaque, and yes, technically it is. However, it's still a very small portion of it, extremely small. It's typically, it, it's fibrous tissue, and that's important important because that further bolsters the, not even opinion, that just the fact that atherosclerosis is caused by inflammation. And there's many things that cause inflammation, plant toxins being one of them, a very salient one, a very significant factor. So anyway, thank you for watching till the end. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, please subscribe, and please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. And also most importantly, subscribe to the Patreon, $1 a month tier, $5 a month tier, and $8 a month tier to gain access to ad-free content, uncensored content, unblurred pop-ups on the screen, one week early uploads, and three videos per week.
week. Even one dollar helps a lot. I'm trying to expedite my healing process from a very ameliorable condition, but it's a very slow amelioration. The only clinic that can really treat me is at least 12 to 14 hours away in terms of a drive, and that is not feasible travel fee wise, and plane flights are also too expensive. I can't fly on those anyway. So indigent me is asking and supplicating for your donations so that I can in the long run actually afford to rent a place down there in Florida because that's where that clinic is located. My partner and I are working on doing such a thing, so I would appreciate any money. Also, if you want to get more of a bang for your buck in terms of your donation, physically speaking, you could also refer to the link on the screen below, the Cerule link. If you need any further help in ameliorating inflammation or any condition that is characterized by chronic systemic inflammation, and you've already adopted a carnivorous diet, and you've cut out a lot of plants and all that stuff, and you just need an extra punch or an extra kick, I recommend that you check out the Cerule products. But before you buy such a thing, of course, you should look into what they are, who should take it, why you should take it, when to take it, etc., etc. And I explain such things in a very thorough elucidation video called Cerule Products, which is going to be linked in one of the corners of the screen right now, and also in the description below. So refer to those, and also buy my book, Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. When that book is out, it was supposed to be out by March 1st, except our publishing company is giving us a slew of issues, and they've actually been doing such a thing due to incompetence ever since we started working with them. If you have a book written, or you would like to write a book, and you're wondering who the best publishers are, I can't actually give you that information, but what I can tell you is what one of the worst ones is, and that is the Ghost Writing Club based in LA. Never, ever, ever, under any circumstances, sign up with them, ever. They are incredibly incompetent. It is egregious. I believe they're incorrigible. There's nothing that can help them. So don't do that. We're aiming now for, at most, at the latest April 1st of this year. So follow me on Instagram, TikTok before I'm banned, because I already have a community guideline strike, and also have a comment that was removed for bullying purposes, even though I was replying to someone else that was bullying me. This is the world we live in today. But also follow me on Twitter or X because I'm trying to get an X basic subscription so I can post my videos in full on Twitter or X as well. So just in case I get banned on YouTube, my following is still extant just on a different platform. So please go out of your way, take five seconds, follow me on Twitter. Even if I don't post that often at the moment, it could be a very, very, very prudent decision on your part if I do get banned on YouTube, which is a very salient threat nowadays. Also email me at edgoki14 at gmail.com if you would like to ask me any questions, or if you'd like to recommend that I react to certain videos in particular, I have a vast stash in my playlist on YouTube and on Instagram. However, I will of course put those aside to cater towards the viewer. So with that being said, join me next time when we react to someone else that knows nothing or may know something in the case of Dr. James DiNicola Antonio about human nutrition science, biochemistry, human physiology, comparative anatomy, inferential statistics, etc, etc, etc. So see you then.